In this society, some black people became well-known figures in their own right. Francis Barber was brought from Jamaica at the age of seven as a slave. When his owner died, he was passed to a new master, one of England's leading authors, Samuel Johnson. Samuel Johnson's an interesting character because he was one of the finest, perhaps the finest mind of his time. And he had strong, strong feelings about race and slavery. He violently opposed it. He had in his household a young man named Francis Barber who lived with him for 34 years. Barber became settled enough to marry and start a family line, which still survives. Francis Barber's son was Samuel. Samuel's son was Isaac. Isaac's son was Enoch. Enoch's son was William Edward. William Edward's son was Albert. And I, Dennis, is Albert's son. Francis Barber would be intrigued to see how white his descendants have become. In his day, the difference between black and white hardly mattered. I think that uh, Sam Johnson looked on Francis Barber uh, as being his son. Their relationship, I mean, to stay with him for 35 years. And it must have cost him quite a lot of money to educate him as well, and as well to keep him. So I think there was a very, very strong relationship, more like father and son. Even when Francis was away at school, Johnson wrote to him regularly. Dear Francis, I am at last sat down to write to you and thought very much to blame myself for having neglected you so long. Let me know what English books you read. You can never be wise unless you love reading. Do not imagine that I shall forget you or forsake you. Yours affectionately, Samuel Johnson. On his return to the household, Francis became Johnson's manservant and constant companion, befriended by London's literary elite. Of course, when you have someone like Francis Barber in the household who's well known to all of Johnson's friends, that person is going to have contact with Johnson's friends as well. So uh, Boswell, when he is writing the biography of Johnson, of course, trailing him around and taking all his famous notes, becomes someone who knows Francis Barber. And he referred to him as, I think, Gentle Frank or Dear Frank. Dear Frank, some of your old master's friends have thought that your opening a little shop for a few books and stationery wares in Litchfield might be a good thing. I hope you may consult and consider of it. I am, sir, your sincere friend. James Boswell. And at the end of Johnson's life, he did an unprecedented thing, which was to leave him his literary estate and, and quite a bit of money. This had been warned against by some of Johnson's friends, but he felt very strongly that Frank was the closest thing he would have to family. I don't want to exaggerate that because he doesn't think of Frank really as being family, but he is the closest thing to family and he feels very strongly that Frank should be supported for the rest of his life. In the name of God, amen. I, Samuel Johnson, being in full possession of my faculties, do ordain this my last will and to the aforesaid sums of money and property, together with my books, plate, and household furniture, I leave to the use of Francis Barber my manservant, a Negro. Using the money that Johnson had left him, Barber moved back to Litchfield with his wife, an Englishwoman called Betsy, and their children. He died in 1801. His family have lived in the same area ever since. As far as colour-wise, uh, I have never been embarrassed by uh, I am a descendant from uh, Francis Barber. Uh, I've always classed myself uh, as being English. And uh, I would have thought that Francis Barber, uh, being uh, educated uh, and in this country for most of his life, uh, would consider himself uh, to be an Englishman. 
Francis Barber lived the life of an English gentleman. Yet by the time Dennis was born, his own family was trying to paint their black ancestor out of the picture. My mother didn't like to hear anybody talk about uh, Francis Barber. My father always raised it and called him always, said Mr Barber. And my mother always used to turn around and say, look, don't talk about that black man in front of the children. Says it's gonna come a time if you don't accept that chip, you're gonna be killed. <laughs>